Hi guys, and welcome to the second season of Thunderstorms called Downpour. If you have not listened to the first season of Thunderstorms, I highly suggest you go listen to that now, as the rest of the story will probably not make sense, but that is completely up to you. As always, this series is written by Stacey Holt. The voices in this series are not only me, but my friends as well. This is a collaborative series. You can find links to their social media and their YouTube channels in the description box below. If you'd like to support this series, please like, subscribe, and comment. Adrian and Cat Noir will be voiced by Shane. I will be voicing Marinette, Adrian's Aunt Amelie, and the narrator. Maddie is going to be voicing Tiki and Rose. Keaton is going to be voicing Luca. Freeze is going to be voicing Mark and Waze. Super is going to be voicing a reporter, as well as a beach jock in the future script. Scott is going to be voicing Kim. Ashton will be voicing Alia, Plag, Kagami, Natalie, and Julika. Brad will be voicing Tom. Calvin will be voicing Nino and Hawk Moth. Nick will be voicing Felix and another reporter. Nathaniel will be voiced by Dylan. Ivan will be voiced by Christian. Chloe and Adrian's mother, Emily, will be voiced by Anna. And Master Fu will be voiced by Steve. Lila, Mi Lin, Alex and Max are still undecided. If you think you would make a good voice actor and have Discord with a good recording device and good quality mic, please shoot me a friend request on Discord and we'll see. Artwork was provided and approved by Sisat. Sisiat on Tumblr. Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. I will provide links to their artwork below as well as my social media. If you would like to support this series, please like, subscribe, and comment. Now, Chapter 1 An Eventful Night Marinette smiled as she read the text, feeling her cheeks burn as she closed her eyes. She smiled and flailed her legs on her bed in excitement, but flung herself out of her bed. She ran down her steps and ran into the bathroom, putting deodorant on and brushing her teeth before he got there. Tiki asked, confused. N nothing just getting ready for bed like I always do, Marinette said, spitting her toothpaste out. Marinette, you never brush your teeth before bed. You always forget because you stay up so late working on your sewing machine. Tiki smirked. Okay, okay. It's because he's coming over soon, Marinette squealed. Before they could talk anymore, they heard the squeak of the skylight open and saw Cat Noir stick his head inside with a smile. Hope I'm not interrupting anything, ladies. He grinned. Not at all. Come on in. Marinette laughed, seeing him jump in, avoiding her bed so he wouldn't get it dirty. He jumped down to where Marinette was and saw she was still in her evening outfit. He hadn't given her enough time to shower or change or anything. Oh, I'm sorry. I probably shouldn't have come so soon. I can go and come back later he said, rubbing the back of his neck. No, it's all right. I know Papa wouldn't mind a rematch downstairs while you wait, Marinette said, kissing his cheek as she walked inside the bathroom. Before she closed the door, she laughed as she saw his cheeks turn pink. The night was calm. Well, besides the yelling they were doing while playing video games, though Marinette beat all of them when she got out of the shower. Tom and Cat Noir even tried to double team Marinette and still lost. That's what you get for messing with the best, Marinette laughed, soaking in the rays of her win. All right, Tom, we need to get ready for bed. Cat Noir, you need to leave in an hour, all right? Sabine said. All right, ma'am. He smiled. Tom put his hand on Cat Noir's shoulder and nodded, letting him know he trusted him. That was a lot for Cat Noir. Though Marinette's parents didn't know they were dating, she didn't really want to tell them. It would seem... A little weird for Cat Noir to come over if she were dating Adrian. Why didn't you tell them you won the fashion show? He asked. I'll tell them over breakfast, she yawned, heading up toward her bedroom. I'll walk you to your bed, but I should probably get going since you're getting tired. He laughed. Me? Tired? Pfft, no way. I never get tired, Marinette joked, closing the latch behind him as he walked inside her bedroom. Fine. Like I said earlier, we'll watch our last episode of our show, and then I'll head home. You don't want to be sleepy. We have a dinner date tomorrow. He said, jumping up to her bed. Dinner date? She asked, climbing up the ladder to meet him, grabbing her laptop along the way. Don't tell me you already forgot. 
he said with a shocked face. Uh, no? She lied, sitting down next to him, putting the laptop in front of them. It's alright. You were probably too nervous to remember. The fashion show prize was that you get to eat dinner with Mr. Agrest, my father. He said. Wait, what? She screamed, turning her head away from the laptop and looking at him. He looked at her a little stunned. Y yeah I know he's a little cold and intimidating, but I'll be there for you. You should be fine. He said. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know. Is there a second prize? Marinette said nervously. Come on, Marinette. You're Paris's superhero. You've got this. He smiled, wrapping his arm around her shoulder to comfort her. He could tell she was nervous, and he could understand why. She wanted to be a fashion designer. It was going to be alright though, because she was Ladybug and he was Cat Noir. Together, they could do anything. After a little while, Marinette relaxed and rested her head against him, letting it lay under his chin, feeling his head rest on hers. How she would think back to those nights that he would come over during those thunderstorms and confide in her. Memories would replay over and over in her mind like a movie projector. And she soon found herself not paying attention to the show at all. She blinked and looked up at him. His eyes were closed. They were basically almost laying down, but she didn't want to wake him up. She glanced over to Tiki and nodded, letting her know to click the lights off so that way it would be easier for her to not wake him. She moved her head and gently laid him on his back, making sure he didn't wake up. She sat there a second in the darkness, trying to remain still, listening and waiting to see if he would make a sound. Nothing. She breathed out. Good. She wanted him to stay. She wanted him to stay the night with her like he used to. She snuggled herself up under the blankets again, facing him, but couldn't see him. She could only see a dark outline of a body in front of her, but knowing he was there was good enough for her. She nudged closer and felt his body heat against hers and felt him move, making her jolt in fear of waking him. She stiffened. His eyes opened in a smirk. If you wanted me to stay, all you had to do was ask. She could hear the devilish smirk he was making in his voice. Ugh, shut up, she said, putting her hands over his eyes. Also, the night vision isn't fair. Fine then, she heard him say. Plague claws. Now placing her hands over his mouth instead of his eyes. No, no not that either. You have to stay transformed. What if my parents come up here? You can't exactly leave as Adrian, Marinette sighed, pulling her hands away in general. Sure it's not because my civilian self makes you nervous? He teased. Ugh, cat, she groaned. Before you're homeless. All right, all right, I'll stop teasing you. He laughed. Marinette smiled and looked at Cat Noir, making him blush as he nosed her staring. As they were staring at one another in the darkness, it made the silence more magnified. Cat Noir reached out and felt Marinette's fingertips. He felt them intertwine, and a smile grew on both of their faces. She looked up at him, his piercing green eyes almost illuminating in the dark. If I didn't know any better, I'd say you look rather creepy right now, Marinette laughed. Huh? What do you mean? He said, almost offended. Your eyes are glowing or something. It's cool, but creepy, Marinette laughed, taking a picture with her phone to show him. He took the phone from her, and his eyes widened with surprise. I didn't know they did that. That's kind of cool, he said with a smile growing. All right, all right, give me back that paw, mister, she said laughing, referring to his hand that he took from her to hold her phone. He blushed and took hold of her hand and leaned closer to her. He could feel her hair against his face and feel her breath on his. Was that... mint? Spearmint? He said. What? She said. You smell like... mint? He sniffed again. You dumb cat! She blushed, internally screaming. Wait, you brushed your teeth tonight because you were hoping to kiss me, huh? He wiggled his eyebrows, not knowing if she could see or not. Oh, shut up! 
He could see her roll her eyes. Yep, that was Ladybug all right. But she was his. She was his girlfriend. Well, I'm all yours. I'm your boyfriend, after all. He smirked, referring to the name that caused her so much emotional trauma at the restaurant earlier that night. He could see her eyes widen and her face turn bright red at the name. It was almost like she turned into a cherry or had her ladybug mask on. Before he knew it, she had her hands on his cheeks and her lips pressed against his. Chapter 2 Chloe Marinette woke up to the smell of fresh croissants and smiled. She yawned and sat up. She did her normal morning routine, brushed her teeth, took a shower, again, just because showers in the morning are amazing. Checked her email to make sure her classes weren't canceled. Good thing too, because her last class for the day was. Then she put her clothes on and headed downstairs. Good morning, Marinette. Sabine smiled, seeing Marinette come down the stairs. Fresh croissants are on the table, Tom said. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Dad, she smiled, going to sit at the table, but stopped when she saw Adrian. A Adrian? She screamed. Oh, yeah, he stopped by this morning. I forgot to tell you, Sabine chuckled. H Hi, Marinette. He smiled nervously. Hi, Adrian, she said nervously back, sitting down beside him. Why didn't you text me you were here? I did, he whispered back, both faking a smile when Sabine and Tom would glance over at them. Eat up, you two, Tom said, placing more in front of them. Uh, so, why are you here, uh, Adrian, she said placing a croissant on a plate and placing it in front of him. He hinted toward her phone and took a bite of the croissant, trying to save time. Marinette took out her phone and read his text. Oh, I completely forgot. Mom, Dad, I forgot to tell you last night that fashion show that I was in. She started, placing a croissant on a plate for herself now. Yeah? Tom said sitting down in front of her excited, taking a bite of one. Well, Adrian modeled it for me and we won, she smiled. That's great, honey, he said, calling Sabine over. Yeah, well, Marinette said, looking down at her food. The grand prize for winning is an exclusive dinner with Gabriel Agress. I was going to walk her to school this morning to congratulate her and ask if it was all right if she rolled home with me after school, since she would be coming over for dinner anyway. If that was all right. Adrian smiled. Tom looked over at Sabine, as if thinking about not allowing it. Adrian thought it was weird. If he was Cat Noir, they would definitely have no problem with it at all. They loved Cat Noir. They let him stay the night sometimes. Why was it any different with Adrian? Wasn't Adrian trustworthy as well? I guess that would be fine. Today at the bakery shouldn't be too busy. Tom said, a little weary. What time should we expect her to be home? Sabine smiled, taking a croissant. 9.30? Adrian said, not knowing the answer himself. That'll be fine. Tom said, standing up and leaving to go downstairs. You kids better get to school or you'll be late. Marinette sighed and she followed Adrian out of the bakery. They decided to walk to school and Adrian noticed Marinette was more quiet than usual. What's the matter? He asked. I'm just scared, she said, looking over to him. <laughs> it's just my dad. He laughed. She glanced over at him and pouted, giving him the look. She was right. His father had no idea they were dating. So she would feel not only awkward at his house, but scared to meet him under those circumstances. I'll talk to him, I promise, he said. You will, Marinette said. Yeah, he said, smiling, taking her hand in his. Marinette smiled, looking down at their hands, remembering the night before. They couldn't keep their hands intertwined long enough. People were around every corner wanting either photographs or a picture of him, and she could see why he tried to warn her. She could see why there would be complications. 
She understood the annoyances of paparazzi when she was Ladybug, and usually, she dealt with it while transformed. That's why she was classified as the main, in-charge superhero, when in reality, they were equals. He just didn't deal with the public because he was tired of it in his civilian life. Everyone needed a break. After the crowd subsided, they made their way to class and took their normal seats. They pretended everything was the exact same. Like they didn't know their partner's superhero alter ego sat either behind them or in front of them. Alia still posted on the Lady blog, still trying to figure out who Ladybug was. Chloe still admired Ladybug, while Adrian and Marinette laughed amongst themselves. Marinette told Alia and Nino to keep their data secret so that it wouldn't cause a bunch of drama, while Adrian talked to his dad. Getting Adrian to talk to his dad was stressful enough as it was, especially since Marinette was already freaking out about the dinner that night. Want to come over for some lunch? Adrian said, standing up, grabbing his things and putting them inside his bag. Marinette watched Alia smirk at her, and Marinette turned back to Adrian, a little flustered by his sudden question. Adrian, we can't... She began. I will, Adrikins. Chloe chimed in, clinging to his arm. Adrian smiled awkwardly, pulling away slightly. He knew that he should act normal, but he was technically dating Marinette. He felt dirty letting Chloe cling to him like that. Should he say something? Should he tell her they were dating? How was Marinette going to react? He turned to look at Marinette and saw her packing her things and ignoring both of them and the entire interaction. Uh, Chloe, I was going to ask... He began. No, it's alright. I'll see you tonight. Marinette smiled. Adrian gave Marinette a saddened expression, almost like he failed her as her boyfriend in some way. Chloe smirked at Marinette as Marinette walked past and left. Adrian sighed and shrugged Chloe off, looking at her as she smiled at him. Where do you want to go for lunch? She smiled, obviously excited. It was alright. He could make this work. He could always talk to Chloe about him and Marinette dating. He could try and talk to her about their relationship and see what she thinks about how his dad would react. Chloe was his first friend since they were little. He trusted her. He wanted her opinion. She was like his little, stubborn, slightly annoying sister. Whatever you want, Chloe. He smiled. Chloe's eyes widened with surprise and a huge smile spread across her face as she took hold of his arm once again, leading him out of the class. Adrian took out his phone and pulled up Marinette and was about to text her, but a flash of red out of the corner of his eye took his attention away from his phone. Look, Adrian, Ladybug! Chloe pointed, smiling. Ladybug swung by and glided toward a building away from the school. Adrian gave a puzzled look and turned to the news, wondering if there was an Akuma. Is there an Akuma? He said to himself. Nope, I think there was a charity event or something. Look. Chloe said, pulling up her phone and letting Adrian see Ladybug waving on camera. As Adrian took Chloe's phone to see better, he heard a news reporter ask where Cat Noir was, and she simply said, He's busy, she said with a smile. He sighed, knowing he should have been with her, though she could cover for him. He gave Chloe back her phone and finished his text to Marinette, then proceeded to get into the car with Chloe to go to a restaurant for lunch. Ladybug pulled out her yo-yo and opened it. She saw she had a text and opened it. The news reporter saw her expression and questioned her. Is that Cat Noir? Is he in danger? What is going on between you two? The questions kept flooding in, but Ladybug kept her cool. It was just a radar stating that the area is still clear from an Akuma. I need to leave now. Thank you for coming to the event. All of Paris as well as Ladybug and Cat Noir thank all of you. She yelled before zipping away. Ladybug zipped away and Dee transformed behind the bakery in an alley. She walked into the bakery and headed upstairs. After grabbing some lunch, she pulled up her phone while taking a bite of her sandwich and smiling. I'm proud of you, Marinette. You didn't let Chloe get you jealous. You trusted Adrian. Tiki smiled. Yeah, I was upset at the beginning, and I think he could tell. He is my partner, after all. He knows me better than anyone. He even texted me at the event. I'm assuming he forgot, since... He was asking me to lunch. Marinette chuckled while rolling her eyes, blushing. What did he text you? She asked. I took Chloe to lunch. I'm gonna tell her we are dating. I hope that is alright, Bugaboo. 
while we're at lunch, I'm going to get her opinion about talking to my father about us. She knows how my father is, since she's been around him since we were kids. I will see you in class this afternoon. XO, XO, your boyfriend, Marinette read aloud to Tiki. Marinette's cheeks singed pink as her voice got higher and higher with each word. He really likes to use the word boyfriend to tease you, huh? Tiki laughed. He really is Ken War, huh? Marinette laughed as well. Well, while they are talking, want to help me with some homework? Marinette asked, looking over to Tiki. Sure, Marinette. Tiki smiled, watching Marinette climb down off of her bed and walk toward her computer. Adrian smiled as he saw Marinette read the text and sent a heart to him. Good. She was alright with him letting Chloe know. He cleared his throat and watched as Chloe ordered sushi for both of them from the server and flicked through her phone. So, Chloe... He began. Yes, Adrikins? She said, looking up at him. Marinette and I... He said, not sure how to word it. You mean Du Ping Chang? Ew. I'm glad you went to lunch with me instead of her. Why did you want to ask her to lunch anyways? She said, almost appalled. Well, that's what I was going to talk to you about. You're like my sister, Chloe. Your sister? Ugh, gross. She said disgustedly. He knew she had feelings for him, and he knew she would take this harshly. He didn't want her to be upset, but it would be best for him to tell her. He needed to tell her. He's never had feelings for her, but he did love her, like a sibling or best friend. Marinette and I are dating. He finally choked out, waiting for Chloe's reaction. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? Chapter 3 Drama I said that Marinette and I are dating. He said again, now a little louder and clearer. Adrian, did she, um, bribe you in some way? You're a model and handsome and so much better than that bakery girl that's going nowhere. Why would you ever want to di- I asked her. I wanted to date her, Chloe. Adrian interrupted her, seeing Chloe's eyes widen with shock. Then why take me to lunch? To rub it in my face? Chloe glared. He could tell she was hurt. He knew that. He knew everything about Chloe. He watched as her feet were crossed and her fingers were tapping against her arms as they were crossed in a pout. She was fighting the urge to cry. Chloe, I didn't invite you here to lunch to brag or rub it in your face. I wanted your opinion on something. He started. Well, my opinion is to dump her. Not that, Chloe. I'm being serious. Adrian sighed, seeing that anything he was trying to say was just going over her head. We're keeping it a secret because I'm afraid of what my father might say and- He started. A secret? With me, you wouldn't have to. You don't have to be ashamed of dating me. Adrian, I have been here for you ever since we were kids. How could you not love me? I've always been there for you. I've always had your back no matter what. Chloe stood up and slammed her hand on the table. She was right. She did. But so did Marinette. Marinette was Ladybug. Him and Marinette fight villains on a daily basis and risk their lives together. It was true that Chloe did trust Adrian and had his back when he needed her, but not in the same way as Marinette. He couldn't tell Chloe that, though. He knew it was unfair, but he just couldn't tell her. I know, Chloe. He said with a frown. If you know, then don't date her. Why not date me? I've always been here right in front of you. She said. I can't. Adrian sighed. Chloe sighed and tears fell down her face. She picked up her purse and walked out of the restaurant. Adrian was about to stand up and chase after her, but the waiter got in his way with their food. Adrian groaned as he was stuck with their sushi in his hands and just decided to have the sushi delivered to her hotel room instead. Lunch was about over and he decided he would eat when he got home. He would also explain to Marinette what happened later. He opened the car door and was about to groan as he felt his stomach ache, but his heart lifted when he saw Marinette walk inside with Alia. He shut the door and rushed off toward her in hopes he could talk to her before class, but saw everyone gathered in a circle. He walked in and stood beside Marinette, giving her a confused look as to ask her what was going on. She shrugged and turned back to the center of the circle. It was Chloe and Lila. They had been posting around the school that Adrian and Marinette were dating. 
everyone was crowding around Chloe and Lila because they wanted the entire story, because they told everyone that Adrian was bribed into dating her. You see, there would be no way Adrian would ever date a no good, useless, trash wearing heathen unless some sort of bribery was involved, Chloe said, exaggerating, as if she were in a play. Yeah, Marinette even told me one time that she knew multiple ways to bribe him. Lila chimed in, smirking at Chloe. Adrian looked over at Marinette, both knowing they were lying. He could see Marinette was getting completely angry, but he put his hand on her shoulder and nudged for her to follow him outside. Marinette took a deep breath and followed him, fists clenched in anger as she followed. Adrian found a bench outside where he had given her the umbrella and took a seat and patted the seat beside him. Here, take a seat before classes start. But. Adrian, you're just gonna let them lie like that? None of that was true! Marinette huffed, sitting down beside him. We both know. We're the ones dating. Does it really matter, Bugaboo? He smiled. Marinette looked at him, her cheeks starting to turn pink again at the nickname he gave her, remembering their alter egos. It's been days since they've seen one another in their hero outfits. It almost seemed like finding out their identities and starting dating was all just a magical dream. All right. You're right. The bell rang and they headed into class, taking their normal seats. As the class began, harsh glares throughout the class seemed to resonate and intensify, but every time Marinette would glance around the class, no one would be looking in her direction. Maybe it was all in her head? Miss Bustier, can I go to the bathroom? Marinette asked. The teacher looked over and nodded, but Marinette picked everything up and took all of her belongings with her. Adrian saw and took out his phone and texted her. Where are you going? You're not going to the bathroom. You took all your stuff. Everyone is giving me glares. I'll meet you at your house later. Adrian sighed, knowing that Lila and Chloe's scheming was to blame, but overall, it was his fault for trusting Chloe. He knew she would be upset, but he didn't think she would go to this extent. Adrian looked over at Chloe and saw her messing with her fingernails and rolled his eyes. If only she knew that Marinette was Ladybug, her idol. Chloe treated Marinette harshly and cruelly, even though secretly, she idolized her without knowing. Though Marinette knew and had to put up with it. Those times she acted strangely as Ladybug around Chloe and he didn't understand why, he now understood. He could understand everything that was going through Marinette's head. Well, mostly. Meet me outside the gate at 3 o'clock? He texted. He saw her text back a few seconds later, but it disappeared a few seconds later. Then she simply sent a ladybug and cat emoji to him. His eyes darted to the window, and he shot up, knowing exactly what she was talking about. He asked to leave the classroom, and soon was running across the rooftops, wind blowing through his hair as he made his way to his lady. It's been days since they fought in Akuma. Last time they fought one was when they had each other's miraculous, and they healed her back to normal. The sun was still shining bright and was beginning to turn into fall now, so it wasn't too hot. He found Ladybug standing on top of a building waiting for him, twirling her yo-yo. Did you wait long, milady? He smiled, walking over to her, his ears flicking. Not too long, but while I was waiting, I did get some information on the victim. Here's the plan, she said, turning toward him, eyes narrowed, ready for battle. Now, chapter four, unexpected. Miraculous Ladybug! She yelled, letting the thousands of ladybugs swarm the open air of Paris, creating a nice gust of wind as they passed. Cat Noir walked over to Ladybug and stuck his arm out, while Ladybug smiled and did the same, knowing what he was doing, as it was tradition. Pound it! They both said. See you at three? She said, getting her yo-yo out and getting ready to zip away. LB? It's almost three now. Why not just go together? He asked. What did that look suspicious? You were at school. She rolled her eyes. I could say that I ran home during the Akuma fight. He smiled. She opened her yo-yo and looked at the time, and he was right. By the time he would get to the school, he would have to turn around and have to leave. She sighed and nodded to his suggestion. After you, milady. He said, smiling. She rolled her eyes and smiled, zipping toward his house. He laughed and bolted himself toward his house with his staff and found themselves at his home in a mere few seconds. 
The D transformed near his home in an alley and walked to the gate. Natalie opened the gate and he walked her inside, butterflies growing as she grew closer. Adrian opened the front door and looked over at Marinette. Her posture was very stiff and her eyes looking at her feet. He smiled and took her hand into his and led her into his bedroom. Just sit here. He never comes into my bedroom, so just make yourself at home. I didn't exactly have lunch earlier. <laughs> he rubbed the back of his neck, leading her to his couch that sat near the piano. What happened? Marina asked, confused. Well, the conversation that happened at the restaurant is what caused the outburst today at school. He frowned. I kind of assumed, but go on, she said, crossing her arms as if she were right. She wouldn't listen to me at all. She wanted me to dump you and date her. I couldn't even get to the part where I wanted her opinion about talking to my father. Adrian sighed. Marinette smiled and leaned over and kissed his cheek, causing him to look at her confused. It's alright, Adrian. Go get something to eat. She laughed, hearing his stomach growl. He blushed and walked over to his bedroom door. While I go get something, would you like something to drink or something to eat until dinner tonight? He smiled. Oh, uh, um... A drink? Surprise me? She smiled. He smiled and nodded, disappearing behind his door, letting her get comfortable. Tiki flew out and looked around, not realizing that Plague stayed behind as well. Marinette walked around the room and glanced at his knickknacks. His room was a lot tidier than she would have thought Cat Noir's room would be. Marinette scanned the room and smiled. She'd remember the time she'd been there as Ladybug. The many times they had ran circles around each other and laughed at herself. She walked over to the piano, looking down at the white and black keys. She ran her fingers along the piano and smiled, gently playing a note or two. Careful, if his father hears a sour note, he'll come in here. Plag laughed, making Marinette jump. Oh, <laughs> it's just you. Marinette sighed. Plag, why aren't you with Adrian? Tiki asked. He said I could come in here with you. What? It's not like he's that far away. Plague rolled his eyes. Ugh. Tiki sighed. Aw, come on, Sugar Cube. You know you love seeing me. Plague smiled while seeing Tiki roll her eyes. Marinette giggled, seeing how different they were. Marinette made her way to the window, overlooking Paris. It was a beautiful view, after all. She heard footsteps coming up, and the door opened. Adrian... This view is amazing, she smiled. What are you doing in my son's room? She heard a harsh man's voice behind her and she turned around. Her face went white and her veins ran cold. It was Gabriel Grest, standing right in front of her and he did not seem happy. Now, Chapter 5, Her Fear I got you a green tea. I hope that's alright. Adrian smiled, opening his bedroom door. His smile faded into a shocked expression when he saw his father standing over a marinette as she sat on the couch, almost as if she were being interviewed for a murder. The air was tense. He swallowed and rushed over to her side. Father? What are you doing in here? He asked nervously. Adrian, why is she in your bedroom? Why is she here at all? He glared. She's supposed to come over for dinner, remember? She won the fashion show. I invited her over early after school since she was supposed to come over anyways. He said, handing her some tea, seeing his father not liking his excuse. I was going to tutor her in some homework until we had some dinner tonight. Adrian said lying. Tutor? He raised an eyebrow. Uh, yeah, she missed a class the other day and I was going to catch her up. He smiled. Hmm, fine. I will see you this evening for dinner, Miss Dupain Chang, he said, walking out of the room. Marinette sighed a breath of relief and opened the tea and chugged it, as if she had cotton mouth. Are you alright? He laughed nervously. N no she panicked. What did he say? He said, taking a bite of a sandwich that he had on a plate. He wanted to know what I was doing here. I froze up. I couldn't speak. He told me to have a seat and we waited until you got back. It was too much. Maybe I should just leave, Marinette said, shaking. Marinette, it'll be alright. We fight villains every day. You can have dinner with my father. He laughed. 
Just take a deep breath, he said, putting his hand on top of hers. She did what he said and cleared her mind, though it didn't help but acted like it did. Want to watch our show? He smiled, walking over to the door and locking it. Though the gesture wasn't anything sexual or dirty, her mind went straight to the gutter. Her cheeks flushed red and he wondered what he could have done to make her blush. He grabbed the remote and jumped onto his bed, clicking the TV on, watching Marinette walk over to him awkwardly. He patted the spot beside him on his bed and smiled, watching her sit beside him. You can act like your normal self, like I do at your house. Just loosen up. My home is your home, princess. He laughed, pulling her toward him. He knew she was still uncomfortable at his home. Not only was the encounter with Gabriel overwhelming, she has never been to his home before. He knew that if she felt comfortable at first, now that his father burst in and scared her, she wasn't going to be comfortable now. His civilian self also still made her nervous. What could he do to make her more comfortable? He knew that her alter ego made her more confident, but she was too responsible to use her alter ego for self-gain. But he wasn't. He looked over his shoulder and smirked at Plague, who groaned, knowing fully well what he was going to do. Plague, claws out. Marinette's eyes widened and saw the arms that were encased around her that were once bare turn into a leathery black. She turned her head and found Catnoir right in her face, closer than a kiss away, her nose touching his as her face turned, his bright green eyes smirking at her. Why did you transform? She asked confused, as well as a little shocked. I know you're uncomfortable in my house. My father came in here first off, and now in my house for the first time, now in my bed, with me as Adrian. I know you say you're comfortable around me as Adrian, but I know you're lying. You're more comfortable with your knight in shining armor, Cat Noir, right? He wiggled his eyebrows, making her roll her eyes as well as give a slight laugh. I am comfortable with you as Adrian, Marinette said. Okay, okay. You're more comfortable around Cat Noir, though. You can't say I'm wrong. He smiled, pulling her closer, watching her face turn redder. Fine, maybe just slightly, she smiled. Oh? So you're gonna let all the Lady Noir fans down? He smirked. Not at all. She rolled her eyes, booping his nose. Cat Noir laughed, pulling her into a tight hug as they laughed together as they laid on the bed. Time seemed to have stood still once again, though he was right. She seemed to have relaxed around him as Cat Noir. It did make him a little sad, but he understood why. She was nervous around all of the new surroundings, and Cat Noir was always there for her since the beginning. He was familiar. He was her partner. He was her stability. She needed that, and he would do that for her anytime. He would just need to work on getting her to not be as nervous around him as Adrian, but that would just take time. Adrian? She said, looking into his eyes. Yes? He said cautiously, wondering why she called him by his real name instead of Cat Noir like she normally did. Should we talk to your dad, or do you want to just call the entire thing off? She said in a sigh. Wait, I'm confused. He sat up, upset and confused, turning to her. What I mean is... We're dating. I want to date you. Adrian, let me finish. Marinette, like, I'll talk to him. I promise you don't have to worry. Adrian, let me finish. His eyes widened. She was right. His mind ran away with him before he could even let her talk. He didn't even let her speak. He was just trying to stop her from speaking because he was afraid. All right. I mean... We can still date, but in secret like we've been doing. Just not in our civilian selves. There wouldn't be any Chloe or Lila drama. There wouldn't be any drama with your dad, she said with a saddened smile, almost forced. He could tell it was a hurt smile. She didn't want to. You could come to my house as Cat Noir and I come here as Ladybug. We can date each other as Ladybug and Cat Noir and just... Not as civilians. Our civilian selves are just not realistic, she said. Realistic? He asked, confused. No one would believe you actually like someone like me. That's why everyone believed Chloe and Lila today, she frowned. 
Who cares? He said. I do. I don't. He protested, turning her to look at him. But Adrian, you don't understand. She dropped her head so she wouldn't have to face him. What do you mean? He asked, confused. I... I'm scared. She lifted her head up in a whimper. I don't understand. Please, tell me. I... I don't want you to be Cat Blanc again, she said, a tear falling down her cheek. Now, Chapter 6, The Talk. Cat Blanc? Who is that? Is that me? He asked. I went to the future with Bunnix and had to purify you. You got akumatized. You and I were like how we are now. You knew I was Ladybug. I don't know what happened. You destroyed the entire world, Cat Noir. She said, another tear falling down her cheek. Cat Noir frowned and put his hand on her cheek and wiped her tears away with his thumb and pulled her into a hug to comfort her. I won't let that happen, princess, I promise. He said as he caressed her. Tell me what happened. He said, feeling her wrap her arms around him. What all has she had to deal with as Ladybug that he hadn't known? She had to purify him? He destroyed the entire world? Why? What happened? If he was akumatized, that means they must have had to fight. She told him everything that happened and how she fixed everything back to normal. How she had to fight him as well as saw herself in Hawkmoth underwater dead. How she touched the face of her future self and it rotted away. He had killed her. Every word that Marinette spoke seemed like it shattered Cat Noir's heart. He understood how Marinette felt now, how scary it can be, and why she wanted to keep their relationship a secret. The decision is yours, but I won't let that happen. I promise. I wouldn't let anything happen to you. I would take any hit for you, milady. He smiled, resting his head on top of hers, feeling her arms tighten around him. Marinette sat up and wiped her tears and smiled at him, seeing his green eyes looking into hers a little surprised. She wrapped her hands around his neck, her fingers intertwined in his blonde curls. She closed her eyes and a slight blush spread across her cheeks as she leaned toward him. Kenor's ears flicked and he felt her shift toward him and felt the soft brush of lips against his and closed his eyes, feeling her fingers in his hair. He wrapped his arms around her waist and felt his heart beat faster. He felt her grin through the kiss and grinned back as he pulled away. What's so funny? He opened his eyes slightly, seeing her face red. N nothing I guess we will see what your dad says first. Then we will decide what to do next, she said laughing, covering her face with her hands. Just as he was getting ready to uncover her face and go in for another kiss, they heard a knock at the door. Their eyes darted and Marinette jumped off of the bed and ran over to the couch to avoid a conversation of why are you on the bed with Adrian? She heard Adrian whisper claws in and fix his hair and clothes and quietly unclick the lock on the door. He opened the door and there stood Natalie. She glanced inside and saw Marinette standing near the couch and Adrian with the computer on and homework pulled out on the side of the computer as if they were doing some homework. Is anything wrong, Natalie? Adrian asked. Dinner should be ready in five minutes, Adrian. Natalie said emotionless, turning and leaving. Adrian sighed and closed the door, turning and laughing as Marinette sighed a breath of relief. Adrian walked over and hugged Marinette, catching her off guard and causing her to blush once again. Oh, oops. Forgot you're not used to me as Adrian. He laughed. That comment must have made Marinette feel slightly uncomfortable because she sat down on the couch and went quiet. What's the matter? He asked. Do I make you upset because I'm not comfortable around you as yourself? She asked, a little hesitant with her words. I understand how you feel. I'm the same way with your alter ego and my civilian self. He blushed. Oh, she said, a little surprised. So you're saying I can have some payback? She smirked. They both laughed and the tense air between them lifted. Would you like to go eat some dinner with me and my father, Bugaboo? He smiled, giving her his hand. I suppose. Try not to use those nicknames or cat puns, cat boy. They're clawful. She rolled her eyes. Aww, I would say they're perfect. He winked. They both left his bedroom and walked into the dining room. He pushed her seat in for her like a gentleman, 
and they awaited for his father to attend. The chef in their house took their drink order and their meal order and they sat beside one another. Though they didn't mind waiting, it was like they were on another date. When they heard a door open and the shoes drawing closer, there was no denying who it was about to walk inside the room and sit down. Now, Chapter 7 Dinner Gabriel sat down at the table and looked over at Marinette and Adrian, his glaring stare almost piercing and cold. The waiters brought out their food and sat it down at the table in front of them, refilling their drinks as they passed. So, Mr. Pen Ching, you won the fashion show. Didn't you win the derby hat as well? He said, cutting food on his plate. Uh, yes. Yes, I did, sir. She said, a little nervous. Did you intentionally make it have feathers so it would cause my son allergies? His eyes narrowed. N no She panicked, unsure what else to say of the accusation. Hmm. He said. What are your intentions with my son, then? He said, placing his fork down. Father? Adrian said, stepping in. Adrian, what are your intentions with this young lady? He asked. Intentions? Marina looked over at Adrian, her face red, wondering what he was thinking. What do you mean by intentions? Adrian coughed, looking over at Marinette, embarrassed. She has everything to gain, while you have nothing to gain, son. He narrowed his gaze. Oh, that is what he meant. Intentions to gain in the industry. Of course that's what he meant. Duh. If anything, I gain a lot from her. Quiet, son. Gabriel interrupted him. But father... Son. Gabriel stood up making both Marinette and Adrian look at one another. I'm done with dinner. Congratulations on winning, Dupain Chen, but please leave. He said, leaving the dinner table and going into another room. Natalie came and removed Gabriel's plate, proceeding to remove Marinette's plate as well. Adrian stood up with Marinette. He took Marinette's hand and could tell she was upset. Who wouldn't be after getting yelled at by one of the most famous fashion designers in Paris? She looked up to Gabriel, and he was her boyfriend's father. She was nervous, and he just flat out destroyed her. Adrian hugged Marinette, and she hugged him back. Before he let go of her, he leaned into her ear. I'll bring us some dinner, since we didn't really eat any. He said, leaning out and giving her a kiss on the cheek. Here, take an umbrella. There's a thunderstorm tonight. He smiled. It's alright. I'll see you tomorrow at school. She frowned, shaking her head at the offer, closing the front door behind her. Wait, did she just tell him not to come? She didn't want him to bring her dinner? Did she want to be alone? He would swing by anyways, but he wouldn't let her know he was there. He just wanted to make sure she was alright. That's what a good boyfriend would do. Adrian made his way to his room and slammed his door, not caring what Natalie or his father said. He was upset with how his father treated Marinette. He had no reason to treat her that way. Why had he acted that way to her? He opened the window, hearing the pitter-patter of the harsh rainfall outside and lightning flickering outside every few seconds. He transformed and started running across the rooftops until he found Marinette walking home in the rain. She didn't take the umbrella he offered earlier and he assumed it was because she had one, but she was just getting soaked. She turned down an alley and he assumed it was because she was going to transform into Ladybug to get home faster. But after a few seconds, he never saw her leave. He leaped over to an alley and saw her sitting in the alley letting the rainfall just fall on her. He jumped down into the alley, knowing earlier he told himself he was going to just keep his distance and let her have her alone time. But he was not going to allow her to sit in the rain. Marinette? He said seeing her lift her head from off of her arms that she propped on her knees. Adrian? She wiped the tears, or rain out of her face. He couldn't tell, but he assumed it was both. What are you doing out here? Why didn't you take my umbrella earlier? He said, bending down to see her clearly. Her eyes were red. It was obvious she was crying now. Don't let my stubborn father get to you. I'm happy being with you. You're happy being with me. Who cares? We can make it work. He smiled, kissing her cheek as he lifted her chin to get her to look at him, smiling at her. The rain started to rain harder and another flash of lightning flashed, creating a bang of thunder to follow. 
Marinette rushed to her feet and crashed into Cat Noir's arms, catching him off guard. He felt the cold droplets of water fall off his strands of hair and stream onto her, but he didn't care. He wrapped his arms around her. Everything's going to be okay, he said softly. No, it isn't. I'm gonna drag you down, Adrian. Everyone says so. I'm starting to believe it myself. I thought I was Paris' superhero, but maybe I'm not cut out for that either. What are you saying? He said, pulling away and looking down at her. Marina was clenching her fist, and she looked up at him. She kissed him one more time and then put something in his hands, then dashed off, leaving him in the alley. He opened his hands and saw her earrings and turned to look for Marinette. He took out his staff and extended it to create enough height so he could try and see where she went. He assumed she would go home, but Ladybug? That would be too easy. Where would she run off to? He could wait until tomorrow and confront her at school and then give them to her. It isn't like he could force them on her. If she didn't want to be Ladybug anymore, then she wouldn't. He needed to find her before her mind was made up. It was just one thing after another. She was just overwhelmed and made a rash decision. This wasn't her. She didn't want to do this. He needed to make her see that. Now, Chapter 8, Missing Ladybug! He yelled through the harsh rainfall that could have muffled his yells. He searched and searched until darkfall. He honestly didn't care anymore if he got sick or if he passed out from exhaustion. He needed to find her and convince her to stay Ladybug. He needed her. They had been through too much to just simply give up. Was it the pressure of their relationship and his father that caused her to do this? Was it the fear of Cat Blanc? Was it him that put too much pressure on her? Did he cause her to do this? He went to her home and opened the skylight soaking wet. He climbed down the ladder and went to her bathroom and grabbed a towel and dried off. He went downstairs to her parents, who seemed to be extremely worried. What's the matter? He asked. Oh, sorry. We thought you were Marinette. She went to a friend's house tonight and she should have been back hours ago. She isn't answering her phone and we can't get a hold of her friend or his father. <sighs> we're super worried, Sabine said, trying to call someone. I knew I should have trusted my gut. I didn't want her going to Adrian's house. Tom shook his head. Catnor sighed and finished drying off. I will go out and look for her, he said, trying to seem like he wasn't out for the past few hours already. Oh, thank you, Cat Noir. We're so lucky to have you. Sabine smiled. Uh, yeah, no problem. He forced a smile, heading back upstairs. A few days had passed and Marinette was still nowhere to be found. Her parents reported her as missing and Gabriel Agreste was one of the prime suspects since he was the last person to have seen her, as well as Adrian, but he was quickly taking off since he was a minor and had no ulterior motives. Kenoir would stop by every single day at the Dupen Chang household and stay the night in her bedroom just to make sure she didn't stop by, but she never came home. Alia soon stopped posting on the Lady blog because Ladybug never came around. Cat Noir never gave the earrings to anyone else. He never took them to Master Fu. He was scared he would take them away. He wanted Marinette to have the earrings back. He would defeat the Akuma by himself as Mr. Bug and fix the city. He would not allow anyone to have Ladybug's Miraculous. He would hold both of them until she decided to come get them. She just needed a break. Everyone needed a break. Yeah, that's it. She just needed time. He would take care of Paris until then. What kind of partner would he be if he couldn't do that for her? Every night as he would lay down in her bed, he would talk to Tiki and Plague, who would have mixed feelings about what he was doing, but his mind was already made up. 
He would take out his phone and send her texts about what was going on and what he was doing that day, as well as asking her what she was doing, though no texts would ever come through. The next morning, he didn't have the energy to go to school and decided to just lay in her bed since the night before he had to deal with an Akuma by himself, letting Tiki and Plague talk as he stared out at the skylight above him. Adrian, you can't keep both. You need to take one of us to Master Fu, Tiki said. Why can't he? It's not like he's abusing it. Plague sighed. It's too dangerous for one person to have both, Tiki said. But he isn't hurting anything, Plague argued. Plague, you know the dangers. What if he gets akumatized? Then Hawkmoth has both. He instantly wins. Tiki sighed. Adrian sighed, sitting up and stretching, not having the energy to even bother to argue with him. As he was getting ready to get out of her bed, he heard a thump above him. Though, he would have thought it normal, but it was a lot louder than a normal bird. He saw a shadow hover over the skylight and darted out of bed and transformed, quickly hiding below her bed. He heard someone coming inside the bedroom and making their way inside the bedroom and landing on the bed. Cat Noir jumped up and pounced on the person, hearing a scream. Cat Noir? What are you doing in my bedroom? Marinette said, confused. Where have you been? He said, tears almost filling his eyes as he wrapped her in an embrace. I... She said, feeling his arms around her. It was warm. She forgot what it was like. She wrapped her arms around him and smiled. Sorry, she finally said. Your parents reported you missing. You know how worried everyone was? He said, leaning out and taking hold of both of her shoulders. I needed to get away, Marinette said, feeling a little guilty. Why didn't you send a text or something to let us know you were all right? At least your parents. I texted you every day. Why not text me back? He said, frowning. I'm sorry. I just couldn't. She said, turning away. No, look at me. He said, shaking her slightly to get her to look at him. What do you want me to say? That I'm a coward? She yelled. You're a what? No? He said, letting her go. That's what I am. I felt awful. I couldn't face anyone. I don't want to face anyone still. I was coming to get my stuff and leaving. She said. No, you're not, he demanded. You're not stopping me! Marinette tried to stand up, but Cat held her still. You're not leaving again. Watch me! Marinette, stop this! You're Ladybug! No, I'm not! Not anymore! I'm a coward who can't even face one man! One measly man named Gabriel Agrest! I'm not gonna get anywhere in life! Everyone knows that! Prove them wrong. You can do anything. Just show them. Cat Noir pleaded. His words caused her to go silent. She knew he was right, but she was scared. She was scared of failing. Scared of failing and everyone being right about her being useless. I know you're scared. The day we met as superheroes, I could tell you were beyond scared. You were madly clumsy, but that didn't stop you. Being scared of failure didn't stop you. He said. Marinette looked up at him. Marinette, I can't do this without you. We're partners. I need my partner back. He said, taking the earrings out and placing them back into her hands. He smiled and he gave her a nod. Thanks, Adrian. I needed someone to tuck some sense back into me. She said, smiling and putting her earrings back in. She hugged him and felt him hug her back. I'll always be here for you. He smiled. Now, where did you run off to anyway? Cat said, leaning out. I might have stayed at Master Foo's. Marinette laughed. He let you? He didn't lecture you? Yeah? Why do you think I came back? Marinette laughed. Well, I'm glad I have you back. Now, we need to fix everything. Everyone suspects my father of kidnapping you. Can you, uh, fix that, LB? He winked. 
I hate lying, but... She sighed. To make things simpler, I'll say Ladybug and you found me during the last Akuma fight last night. Sorry about not showing up, she said, kissing his cheek. It was worth it. He smiled. But that plan is fine with me. I'll explain to your parents that I was simply too tired after the fight to tell them. He smiled, holding up his fist. She smiled and fist bumped her partner gently. Want to go down there with me? She asked, climbing down the ladder. I'll be there in a second, Bugaboo. I need a minute to myself. He said, laying on his back in her bed. She smiled and went downstairs. A few seconds later, he heard a lot of movement and voices coming from under him. He assumed they were hugging her and wondering what had happened. He was glad she was safe. He was glad she had someone to talk things out with. He was happy to have her in his life, though they still needed to talk about them as a couple. He also needed to confront his father about him and Marinette. First, he needed to clear his father from being a kidnapped suspect. He closed his eyes, finally being able to relax after the days she went missing. This was nice. Her room actually felt like home again. When she wasn't there, it was lonesome and saddening. But when she returned, it seemed like the sunlight filled the room once again. It was like a rainbow that pierced through the storm clouds after a harsh downpour. He sat up and walked down the stairs to find Marinette being crowded by Sabine and Tom. Thank you, Cat Noir. Tom called out, rushing over to pull him into a group hug. Uh, no problem. He forced an almost awkward smile, unsure how to respond. Marinette laughed and pulled away. Well, did Marinette explain how Mr. Agress is no longer a suspect? He said. Yes, we already called the officials and they cleared him. I'm glad, though when they were investigating Mr. Agrest, they said they were keeping an eye on him for other reasons. They wouldn't let us know. They told us they would need to inform Ladybug and Cat Noir as soon as possible, Sabine said, a little worried. Cat Noir and Marinette exchanged worried looks. Well, Mom, Dad, do you care if I get caught up on some missed homework and take a shower and maybe a nap? I'm kind of behind and oh, a little tired, Marinette said. Oh, of course, dear. We're so glad you're home. Be more careful around Akumas. We're going to get you a new phone since your last one was ruined. Sabine smiled and hugged Marinette. Thanks, Mom. Marinette smiled and went upstairs. I'm going to go see what the police needed. Hero's duty and all. Katnoir smiled and left, knowing Marinette would transform and meet up with him soon. Now, Chapter 9, Hawk Moth. Katnoir arrived at the police station, but was directed to the Agress mansion. He started getting worried when he saw his father being taken out in handcuffs. Ladybug zipped her way over and landed beside him. What's going on? Ladybug said, watching Mr. Agress getting put into the back of a police car. I'm... Honestly, not sure, he said, resisting not rushing over to his father. A police officer walked over and put their hands on their hips, letting out a huff. Who would have guessed it? Police officers found out who Hawkmoth was before you superheroes. You aren't needed anymore. The police officer smirked. What do you mean? Hawkmoth? Who? Cat Noir said, his fist clenched at the very accusation. Gabriel aggressed, he said. While investigating the premises, we got a warrant to search the home and found a secret basement of some sort with butterflies stored in the basement. We also found his missing wife. Mom? What was that? Nothing. Good job. Uh, we will leave it to you. We need to go... Uh, where is the miraculous that he had? Ladybug interrupted, putting her hands on Cat Noir's shoulders for comfort. We couldn't find that. Didn't think we needed to. We had enough evidence. The police officer walked away, leaving Cat Noir and Ladybug to deal with the new information. Come on, Cat. We need to go, Ladybug said, seeing him about to collapse on the ground. I can't move, Elby. He faintly said. She looked around and saw no one watching, so she hoisted him up around her shoulder and zipped him away, knowing his mind was going blank. If what the police said was true, if Hawkmoth was his father, 
then he would definitely be going to jail. One thing was for sure, they found a woman in the basement that could be his missing mother. They would confirm or deny that later. For now, she needed to come for Cat Noir. Why did all of this have to happen right after the other? Why did things have to pile on them? Why couldn't they ever catch a break? Ladybug swung them to a nearby park that seemed to be deserted. Due to the fact that the news of Hawk Moth being captured spread throughout town rapidly and caused the entire city to rush to his home, so they were alone for the moment. She sat him down on the bench and sat down beside him, wrapping her arm around his shoulder as he laid his head in her lap. He almost curled up into a ball. She knew he was hurting. Not only did he lose his mother, but finding out that he could be losing his father too? How could his father do this to his son and risk that? She stroked his back as he laid there. She assumed he was trying to collect his thoughts as he wasn't speaking or making any noises. She thought he would be crying or talking, but he just remained quiet, which scared her more than anything. Cat, are you all right? She asked, still rubbing his back. Do you think it's true? He finally spoke, his voice hoarse. She knew he was fighting back tears. Do I think what's true? She asked, now moving her hand up to his hair, stroking his hair out of his face. Do you think my father is Hawk Moth? He said, turning his head slightly to look at her. I don't have the butterfly or peacock miraculous. She smiled. He paused for a moment and sat up. He turned away and she could tell he was wiping whatever was on his face away and tried to hype himself back up. Come on, let's go see what's in the basement. We need to see for ourselves before we start assuming. Like they thought when you went missing. He said with a determined smile. Good, that's what I like to hear. She said, standing up and walking over and landing a kiss on his cheek. She pulled out her yo-yo and zipped her way back to the egress mansion, ignoring the public that lingered outside of the gate, while Cat Noir followed close behind her. Chapter 10 it's all right to cry. They jumped up onto the top of the building and slid into Adrian's bedroom, making sure no one saw them as they entered. Not that it mattered since they were superheroes, doing their job after all, but Catmore's behavior was unstable, and Ladybug knew that. She didn't want him to do anything rash. They said there was a secret basement, Ladybug said. It has to be in his office somewhere. It's where I found that one book. It's also where he spends all of his time. Cat Noir said, leading the way. Ladybug followed him and could tell he was nervous, which was understandable. She was also worried. She didn't want to think about what would happen if Gabriel was actually Hawk Moth. Firstly, why? Secondly, who was using the Peacock Miraculous if he was Hawk Moth? Thirdly, if Gabriel is arrested, where would Adrian go? Would Natalie take him, or would she not be considered a caretaker? Too many questions were running through her mind, and all she could think of were the worst possible results. She sped up her walking and took his hand into hers and gave him a fake confident smile, trying to stay positive for him, though she bit back tears. Catnor opened the door and hesitantly walked inside, almost like he was terrified to enter the room. He walked over to where he found the book once before and looked around, though it still looked like a normal picture frame. Plague. Claws in. He whispered. Ladybug watched Plague fly out and land in his hand as he gave him a piece of cheese. Adrian looked to Ladybug and for once he didn't joke or waver. He was the most serious she had ever seen. Plague flew in here and unlocked it, letting me get the book out. I was gonna go see if I could find a way into the basement. He said, waiting for Plague to finish the cheese. Yeah, yeah. Plague groaned, finishing eating his cheese and then flying around the room. It took a few minutes of Plague flying into different walls until Adrian groaned. Ugh, what kid? Plague asked, unenthused. Plague, fly downwards. It's in the basement. Go to the basement and follow away upwards. Adrian sighed. Huh. Oh, right. Plague laughed embarrassingly and did what Adrian suggested. A second later, they felt a shift below their feet start to rumble, and their line of vision start to darken as they were being lowered. Adrian felt a little out of balance not being in a superhero suit and shifted backward until he felt Ladybug and turned his head. His face lit up red and she remembered what he had said about her superhero alter ego making him nervous. 
<laughs> it's all right, kitty. She leaned down and placed a kiss on his cheek, smirking as she put a hand on his shoulder to keep him steady. You're doing that on purpose now. He let out a slight laugh. Plague, claws out. He whispered so he would be able to face anything that came their way on the other side. But when a piercing light from the basement shined in their eyes, they both went silent. White butterflies scattered around them, glistening in the sunlight through a huge window that overlooked Paris. Ladybug let go of Cat Noir and let him walk through the white fluttering silhouettes as he made his way down the path that met to an almost garden-like scenery, centered around something resembling a coffin. She could tell by his walking speed as he grew closer that what the police had told them was true about one of them. Ladybug zipped her way to him, catching him as he fell to his knees in front of the coffin. Ladybug held him around his arms as he stayed silent, almost embarrassed of his feelings. She looked up and saw that it was his mother, the same woman that she saw in his desktop background. Though she hadn't aged or decayed, it was like she was being kept alive or was in some sort of comatose state. Adrian, she's still alive, she whispered. She felt his back shudder and she could tell he was fighting to break down in front of her. Adrian, look at me, she screamed, trying to force him to look at her. No. Why not? She yelled. Because if I do, I know I'll break down and I won't be able to stop. His voice was hoarse. It's all right to cry, Adrian. After everything you've gone through, she said, pulling his face to meet hers. I don't want to turn into Cat Blanc, he whispered, gripping her hand, looking up at her. She looked down at him, tears starting to fill her own eyes. That was why he was fighting his own emotions? He was trying to hold everything inside for her sake? He was trying so hard because of what she told him earlier. Oh, Adrian, I'm so sorry. I will always be there to help you. It's all right to cry. Ladybug started to cry. In that instant, she watched as his face turned from a bottled up strained smile into a gasping for breath cry. He cried into her, wrapping his arms around her. She wrapped her arms around him, feeling his back quiver with every breath he sucked in, her eyes looking up at his mother that lay inside the glass, her body so lifeless and cold. She didn't know how to help him. The only thing she knew she could do was to be there for him and let him cry into her. She stroked his hair and lifted his head to look at him. He had tears streaming down his face. We can bring her back, Adrian, Ladybug smiled. We can figure this out. Those comforting words that she thought would soothe made his heart ache, and he wrapped his arms around her and pulled her closer, crying into her. Your father has it set up to where she's safe. Come stay with me, she whispered, picking him up in her arms. No, it's all right. I want to stay home, Cat said, letting go of Ladybug and standing up. Cat! Go home to your family, he said, giving her a forced smile, pulling away from her. You're my family too, remember? You've been for a long time, she said, grabbing his hand, watching his eyes look down at her hand. Now, chapter 11, his fate. All right, princess, he said, wiping his tears. Ladybug smiled and pulled him close and hugged him one last time, kissing his nose before they both left the aggressed household. They both landed on Marinette's balcony and walked down the ladder to her bed. Ladybug detransformed, and Cat Noir remained transformed, due to the fact that Sabine and Tom knew Cat Noir more than Adrian. She covered Cat up in her blankets and told him to lay down while she got them something to eat and some hot chocolate, disappearing into the kitchen below. But when she returned with the food, she found him turned to the wall and assumed he was asleep and decided not to wake him up. She looked over at Tiki and sighed, looking through her computer at all the news reports about Adrian's father. What are we gonna do, Tiki? She whispered. We need to talk to Master Fu. Tiki whispered back. I didn't want to go talk to him. What if he takes our miraculous? We still don't know if his father is Hawk Moth. We didn't exactly ask permission to know each other's identities. Marinette sighed. I mean, it is against the rules. Tiki frowned. <sighs> Tiki. Marinette groaned. I can go talk to him. Since you both are here, one of you can transport if there is an Akuma. Tiki suggested. Maybe. 
What are we gonna do if Hawkmoth is Adrian's dad, though? Marinette said, a little panic in her voice. I don't know, Tiki said with a frown. I'm scared, Marinette said, burying her face in her hands. Tiki frowned, knowing Marinette tried to stay strong for her partner, but she was also overwhelmed. She didn't know how to handle this situation. They were still teenagers. They were still in high school. They had no clue what to do. As Marinette and Tiki talked, she was unaware that Cat Noir was still awake, listening under the blankets. He remained quiet, wanting to know what she was actually thinking. He knew her better than anyone else. He knew she would never actually tell him she was scared or worried. She would put up a front to keep him calm, and he was right. That was the ladybug thing to do. That was what a partner would do. That was what he did when she was hurting. He took the hits when she was down. When he was down, she took the hits. He knew she didn't want him listening to the conversation, but he needed to hear what she really thought. She honestly didn't know what to do, and it made him feel a little better, actually. He thought that he was the only one lost and helpless. Knowing that Ladybug didn't know what to do either, not only helped him feel like he wasn't the only one struggling, but it also scared him as well. That meant that Ladybug, the person that saved the day every single day, the person who has a solution for everything, had absolutely no idea what to do. It was a comfort and a stab to the heart. He closed his eyes, and before he knew it, he drifted off to sleep, reawakening his eyes to do blue ocean eyes looking at him. Good morning, she whispered, kissing his nose. Yeah, morning he said, rubbing his eyes. You stay in bed. I'll go get us some breakfast, she said. Oh, um, uh, all right, he said, watching her already dressed and walking downstairs, but not in her normal school clothes. He was a little confused, but didn't care. He looked above them and jumped up to the balcony. He stretched and yawned, hearing the birds chirp as the sun started peeking above the horizon. What time is it? He asked out loud pulling out his phone. Marinette popped her head above the balcony and put two plates on a little table. It's about 6 a.m. I figured we would skip school today. Go do some investigating, prove some innocence, and talk to Master Fu, she said, taking a piece of bacon off of her plate. It was almost like the talk last night that she had with Tiki wasn't a secret after all. Did she know he was awake, or did she just decide to tell him? Why? Do you think my father is innocent? He asked, turning his head away, unsure of the answer himself. Like I said, I don't have the miraculous in my possession yet. He could have been keeping your mom safe until a cure was found. And gardening could have been a hobby your mom and dad did when she was sick. I'm not going to point fingers until I have the miraculous in my hand, she said, walking over to Adrian, smiling. I'm not the biggest fan of your dad, but... He is your dad, and you love him. He is your family. You're my family, which makes him my family, she said blushing. Adrian blushed and smiled, hugging her. Thanks, Bugaboo. Now, eat up so we can leave, kitty cat, she said, rolling her eyes. They ate their breakfast, and he watched her transform, still taken aback a little by seeing her transform. They took off towards the police station, and they were face to face with Gabriel in just a few minutes. Ladybug let Cat Noir do all of the talking, though she told him that she would jump in if she felt like he would jeopardize his identity. They all three sat down at a table, and Gabriel glared at both of them. Cat Noir's leg was tapping the ground, and Ladybug took his hand to calm him down. Um, Gabriel Agress, if you really are Hawk Moth, where are the butterfly and peacock miraculous? Cat asked. I don't know what you're talking about, Gabriel said. Why'd you have that woman in your basement? Cat asked. She's in a coma. I have her there until she awakens, he said. What is with the butterflies? Cat said, getting angry. They are my wife's favorites. They are also peaceful and divine, he said. What about your son? He said, slamming his hand on the table. What about him? He said, monotone. Did you not tell him about your wife in the basement? It was on the news. She disappeared. She was missing. How do you think he felt? Cat yelled. 
Ladybug gripped his hand, causing him to turn to her. He sat back down and went quiet. Mr. Agrest, if you aren't proven innocent, what happens to your son? Where will he go? Ladybug asked. I assume he will go with his aunt and his cousin Felix. Gabriel sighed. Ladybug and Cat looked at one another, eyes widened in shock. What about his bodyguard and caretaker? Cat Noir asked. They aren't his kin. I have already signed for him to go to his aunt. The court date is tomorrow to determine my fate. He sighed. But we don't have the miraculous, Ladybug protested. We don't know if it was you or not. She stood up. Sorry, young lady, the odds are stacked against me. Though, it was nice fighting against you both. He smiled. I will tell you both, I wanted the wish to bring her back. To simply be a family with my son once again. I wanted my son to be happy again. He smiled, walking away. Ladybug's eyes widened. She turned to Cat Noir and saw that he was speechless. Gabriel left and the guard that was standing near the door heard every word. Don't report that! She tried to yell, but he had already reported the incident. It's over, isn't it? Cat said, standing up and walking to leave. Cat, she began. You said we were coming here to prove his innocence. You lied! He cried, running out of the police station and disappearing into the streets. Cat, I wanted to. She frowned. Now, Chapter 12 Wait for Me. Ladybug zipped her way to Master Fu and explained everything, from start to finish, from the Akuma shaped bruise to her finding out each other's identities. She told him about finding out Hawk Moth's identity and that it was Adrian's father. She broke down and cried several times, and he comforted her, though he told her that he was glad that she came to him. You and Adrian have grown so much since I've given you both the miraculous. I only gave you the rules of not knowing each other's identity in order to protect both of you. Although I think you've grown to trust one another, and I believe knowing the other person's identity will make you stronger now. He smiled. You're not going to take our miraculous? She asked. No, Marinette. You've done everything you thought was right, and so has Adrian. He said comfortingly. Marinette wiped her eyes and smiled, grateful that he was so understanding. Although, if Adrian does leave Paris, he won't be able to keep the cat miraculous. He knows that and is hurting. He understands that right now. He might have said some hurtful things to you right now, but he didn't mean them. The people we care for the most are the ones that hurt us the most, because we forgive them so easily because we love them. Just give him time." He said, sighing. I know, Master Fu. I'm just scared, and I'm upset as well. I don't want him to leave either. I want him to stay. He's my partner, my best friend, and I love him, she said. Master Fu smiled and put his hand on hers. Why not go tell him that? He said. I don't think it would make a difference. His aunt and cousin live in London. Marinette sighed. It wouldn't hurt to tell him though, would it? He said. Marinette sighed and knew he was right. She stood up and transformed, thanking him and left, running across the rooftops looking for her partner. She looked for hours and hours but the sun went down and still no sign of him. It was like the time she disappeared. He wouldn't disappear as she did, would he? She zipped her way up the Eiffel Tower, remembering the kiss they shared together. She sat down and huffed, wishing he would just magically appear, but knew he didn't want to be found. She saw Adrian's bodyguard's car driving toward the Agrest household and her heart started thumping. Could he be inside the car? Would he be home in just a few minutes? Would she be that lucky? She swung herself toward his home and swung herself into his bedroom, awaiting in his darkened room. She heard footsteps coming toward the bedroom door and it opened. There he was. She was about to step forward, ready to grab him into a tight hug, but saw that he was still processing his thoughts and remained quiet. She stood still, unsure if she should say anything and reveal that she was there or not. For some reason, her voice wouldn't come out. Plague! Why did I believe her? Why did I really think there was even a slight chance that she could be right? He yelled, walking over to his bed and collapsing onto it. Plague flew over and saw her standing there and saw Ladybug almost in tears and was about to say something, but 
Ladybug shook her head. Plag frowned and nodded, knowing he shouldn't get involved. This is such nonsense. Why did she fill my head with such nonsense? I trusted her and they were all lies. He cried in the pillow. I didn't think they were. She quietly whispered, making him quickly turn his head. Ladybug? He said, surprised to see her there. I didn't mean to tell you things that weren't true, Adrian. I just wanted to make you feel better, she said, trying to keep herself together. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were there, he said, looking down at his feet. Don't apologize. You're only apologizing because I heard you. You're upset because you're going to have to move, right? You're not really mad or upset with me, she said, walking to him, sitting on the bed next to him. No, I'm not. He sighed. I know you better than anyone else, you know? She smiled. I know. He smiled through the tears. She put her hands on his face and wiped them away and kissed him. He kissed her back and let the moment just soak in. Their lips parted and they sat there for a second. What? She asked. Felix and my aunt are coming tomorrow for the court date. He sighed. Whatever the verdict is is where I'm going. He said, turning his eyes to the ground. Though after that confession from my father, I doubt I'm staying here. Adrian? She said, putting her hand on his face and gently turning his head to meet hers. Her bluebell eyes glistening in the moonlight reflected in his bright emerald eyes as she took in a breath as she collected her thoughts. I love- Are you sure you want to say that? He smiled. Huh? She asked, a little surprised. You can't take it back once you say it, milady. You'll just have to wait for me until I come back, you know? He smiled, pushing the bangs out of her eyes as a light blush spread across her cheeks. Wait for you? Yeah. Will you wait for me? It's only two years. You think you can handle Paris without me until then? He smiled. Her eyes began to water and nodded, pulling him into a tight hug. He smiled and hugged her back. I have to take plaque, but no one will have your miraculous. No one will replace you. I will guarantee you that. You will always be my kitty. You are my only true partner, Cat Noir, she said, leaning out tears still streaming down her face. Come on, LB. I think we've both done enough crying. He smiled, wiping her tears away. She watched as the moonlight from his window bounced off of his blonde curls, almost entrancing. Adrian? She started again. Yes, bugaboo? He smiled, knowing exactly what she was going to say. I... la... <laughs> You're such a dork. She teased. Wait, what? He asked, seeing her laugh as he was caught off guard. I'm just teasing, she smiled. I love you, she said, kissing his cheek. His face turned the shade of her mask and he was surprised that she didn't comment on it, but it could have been the same reason for her. I love you too, princess. Always have and always will. He smiled, pulling her into another hug. Two years isn't that long, she said in a sigh. Not when I can come visit on holidays, and, and your birthday, and- He smiled. <laughs> okay, okay, she laughed. <laughs> I get it. Maybe your parents will adopt me. Adrian smirked. Adopt you? Ladybug laughed. Yeah, I'm pretty much family already. He laughed. I don't know, they didn't really like your civilian self. Catboy though? <laughs> they love you 100%. She teased. Yeah, what was up with that anyways? He asked, a little hurt. <laughs> no idea, she giggled. They laughed and talked throughout the night, not caring what day it was, or if they had school the next day. They didn't care what time it was, or what time they fell asleep. They just enjoyed the other's company, for the next day, and the last day they would spend with each other. Now, Chapter 13, The Verdict. Good morning, beautiful. He smiled, looking at Marinette laying beside him in his bed. Ugh, shut up. <laughs> she giggled. I'm glad you're a lot more comfortable around me now. He said with a sigh of relief. You're right. <laughs> when did that happen? She asked. No idea, but don't be getting any ideas. He smirked. I won't, I won't. 
she laughed, feeling him brush her bed hair out of her eyes. They lay there staring at one another for a few minutes in silence, but they knew it was a saddening silence. Today was the day they would say goodbye. Adrian pulled her into his arms, letting her lay her head on his chest. Their breathing played a duet back and forth as they sat there in silence until a knock at the door caused them both to sit up. Yes? He said, knowing that they wouldn't come inside. Get dressed, Adrian. We need to be at the courthouse in 30 minutes, Natalie said. Adrian sighed and heard her footsteps walk away and returned his gaze down at Marinette, seeing her give him a worried look. If he really is Hawk Moth, where is his miraculous? She whispered. I'm not really sure, he said. Want me to go with you today? She asked, leaning out to look at him and seeing him frowning. Yeah, that would be nice, he said, looking over at her. She smiled and kissed his cheek, crawling out of his bed and tried fixing her hair. Adrian jumped out of bed and changed clothes while fixing his hair. He turned and saw her transform, smiling as he saw her jumping out of his window. He knew she would meet him outside of the gate. He knew Natalie wouldn't argue with his wishes either, especially since everything he has gone through. Good morning, Adrian. How did you sleep? She asked. Fine. Marinette is outside waiting. She's coming to the courthouse with us. I want her to be there with us. He said, walking past. Adrian, I don't think- I want her there, Natalie. She's my girlfriend. She has been for a while. She's been helping me through the situation with my father. Adrian said, glancing over at Natalie. Natalie sighed and nodded in agreement, knowing that Adrian was not in the mood to argue. All right, Adrian, she said. Adrian opened the door and saw Marinette standing outside of the gate waiting for him. He blushed and smiled, opening the gate for her. She stepped inside and watched them step outside of the gate. Good morning, Marinette, he smiled, pretending like he didn't just see her jump out of his window. Good morning, Adrian, she smiled back. Natalie rolled her eyes and entered the passenger seat as the bodyguard pulled the car around. Adrian opened the car door for Marinette and she slid in and he closed it behind him. He buckled himself in and put his hand on top of hers, trying to distract himself of where he was going. She smiled and rested her head on his shoulder as the buildings quickly passed by. The car ride there was silent as usual, but again, it was comforting. The light touch of their fingertips gripping as their car would hit a speed bump every once in a while. The car came to a stop and Adrian swallowed, seeing the courthouse outside of the car window. The courthouse was surrounded by Parisians, just waiting to get a glimpse at Hawkmoth and Hawkmoth's son. Marinette gripped his hand and lifted her head, letting him know it would be alright, and he took a deep breath. He opened the door, and a light flash of sunlight filled his eyes. Not only was the light of the sun in his eyes now, but he was being surrounded by people with cameras being photographed. People were shoving microphones in his face, just trying to get an exclusive interview of Hawkmoth's son. Adrian, come on, this way, Marinette said, pulling on his hand to follow Natalie. Adrian couldn't catch his breath and decided to follow Marinette, not bothering to excuse himself from the crowd of people asking him tons of questions. He followed them into the courthouse until they were inside a room with a lot of chairs. It was like a real courtroom that they had seen on TV. The bodyguard, Natalie, Marinette, and Adrian sat down in the stand, along with a few other people. The jury was already in their spots and was sitting and waiting. Adrian looked around and saw the judge come in and began to get nervous. It's all right, Adrian, she whispered. The door behind them opened and in came Sabine and Tom, who sat behind Marinette and Adrian, putting their hands on their shoulders with a warm smile. Thanks, Mom. Thanks, Papa. She smiled. No problem, dear, Sabine whispered back. You asked them to come? Adrian asked, confused. They're your family too. She said, smiling. Adrian smiled and took hold of Marinette's hand, trying to remain as calm as possible. The door opened again, and the high heel clicking noise behind Adrian was just too familiar. He turned around, and he knew exactly who it was. Oh, Adrian! It was his Aunt Amelie. Oh, hi, Aunt Amelie. Nice to see you again. Adrian said, standing up to greet her, but was met with a hug. Marinette smiled as a woman that looked exactly like Adrian's mother hugged him with such comfort, and he hugged her back. Adrian let her go and looked down at Marinette. Aunt Amelie, this is Marinette, my girlfriend. He smiled. The sudden introduction not only caught Marinette off guard, but also Sabine and Tom as well. Excuse me? What did you say? Tom spoke up. 
You're dating him? Really? Sabine asked. Uh, yes, Mom, Marinette said. Does he know about Cat Noir coming around all the time? Tom asked, trying to whisper, but it was a terrible effort. Adrian laughed and nodded. Cat Noir is my friend. He smiled. Marinette and I have been dating for a while, actually. He said. Oh, you know she had a huge crush on you for the longest time. I've read through so many diaries. Sabine chuckled. Mom! Marinette screamed. Adrian laughed, seeing Marinette's face light up bright red. We will talk about that later, she glared. Anyways, Amelie, I was wondering if, depending on how the verdict goes, could I stay here in Paris with all my friends? He said. Stay here? Where would you live? Mom, could he stay with us? Please? You let Cat Noir stay with us so much? Please? Marinette turned around, trying to plead. Sabine and Tom looked at one another, and then to Marinette. I'm sorry, Marinette, but there's no room permanently. We only have two bedrooms. I don't feel comfortable with Adrian sleeping in the same room as my daughter. No offense to you, Adrian, but she is my daughter. I must protect her. Tom said determined, making Adrian smile. But still, his heart ached. Marinette sighed and looked over to Adrian, knowing their attempt failed. The door behind them opened again, and an identical boy that looked exactly like Adrian walked in, but was dressed slightly differently and his hair was styled with gel, stood behind Amelie. Hmm, well, let's see how the verdict goes. I may have an idea. Amelie smiled, patting Adrian's back, causing him to give her a warm smile. Amelie and Felix went and took their seats and Adrian sat back down, glancing over at Marinette, seeing her face still red. He laughed as he was listening to her and her parents still bickering and joking about her dating Adrian, and what her diary said about her gushing and head over heels in love with him. It was funny to know that Ladybug was that in love with him, though now he was having to move away. He wished it could have lasted longer. He wished that he could have gone back in time and told her sooner, spent more time with her, did things differently, told her that he loved her sooner. Gabriel walked into the courthouse and snapped him out of his thoughts, and a whole set of thoughts overlapped those previous ones. He said he wanted to use the wish to bring her back. He wanted to bring her back for him. He almost felt bad. He almost yearned for it himself. Did that make him guilty too? Did that make him just as evil as Hawk Moth? Gabriel aggressed. Yes? What do you plead? Guilty, Your Honor. The courthouse fell silent and everyone turned to look at Adrian as he just sat there, looking at his father, the same monotone expression, the same expression he did when his mother disappeared, the same expression at the funeral with no body, the same expression when he won every contest, the same expression when he would do anything. Why? Why wasn't he scared? Why did he not regret it? He was going to jail. He hurt so many people. And for what? Father, why? Why did you do it? You're going to jail and for what? He stood up, not caring what the others thought. You, he said, causing Adrian to go silent. Now, Chapter 14, A Whole New Family. Court officials came and took Gabriel and put him in handcuffs before taking him away. Everyone walked around to Adrian and either patted him on the shoulders as they walked by, or they simply dropped their eyes to the ground out of respect. After almost everyone had left, Amelie, Felix, Natalie, Adrian, and Marinette remained. Amelie stood up and walked over to Adrian, kneeling down to look at him and smiled, calling Felix over to her. Boys, I'll leave the decision up to you two. I have a home in London, and Adrian has a home here in Paris. One of you has to transfer. Felix, you can transfer. Or you could transfer, Adrian. I can find a job here in Paris if I need to. That isn't a problem. Money isn't the issue. You two can decide. Amelie smiled, standing back up and leaving the room. I'm going to go get some water, and I'll be back in a second. Adrian couldn't believe what he was hearing. There was a slight chance he could stay. He turned to Marinette and her eyes were wide with surprise. 
A smile began to grow, but stopped when it hit her. Felix. He hated all of them. Adrian turned to face Felix and sighed. What do you want to do, Felix? He said. Harris doesn't seem too worthless. Felix groaned. Adrian's eyes widened and were about to stand up and hug him. You hug me, and I will revoke my decision. He glared. Thank you, Felix. Adrian exclaimed. Amelie walked back in and saw Adrian hugging Marinette with a huge smile on his face with Felix groaning and she smiled, running over to Felix and hugging him. Oh, Felix, you are such a sweetheart. She squealed. Uh, Mom, stop it already. Felix groaned. Adrian, would you and your little girlfriend mind cleaning your home and packing up stuff for us to move in then? We will be moving our stuff in by tomorrow. Amelie said, letting go of Felix. Sure, no problem. He smiled. The day went on and Marinette explained to her parents that she was going over to Adrian's home to help clean. Not only did Adrian have Marinette helping clean, but also Nino and Ollie as well. They helped make the entire place look clean as can be. They got rid of everything that was once Gabriel's that Adrian didn't want and stored it inside the secret basement where Amelie and Felix had no idea how to get to it, so they knew it would be safe. Though cleaning through all of his stuff, they still couldn't find the butterfly or peacock miraculous. Are we really sure he was Hawkmoth? Adrian sighed. He admitted to it, dude. Nino chimed in. But no one saw him transform or detransform. Alia crossed her arms. Can't argue with that. Nino said, taking back his statement. Ladybug and Catnor stated that they didn't have the miraculous either, Marinette said. Did they? Alia said. Uh, yeah, a police officer on the news said so, Marinette said, a little flustered. Huh, guess I missed that. Ollie sighed. Where could it be then? Adrian groaned. I'm assuming Hawkmoth's partner Mayora has it, Marinette sighed. Good point, Ollie said. They all fell into Adrian's bed out of breath, as if they had been working their butts off all day long, though it was more like an hour at most. They all smiled at one another and then started to laugh. All right, all right. Really, you both need to sort things out at school. You two have missed so many that I can't cover for you any longer. Girl, getting kidnapped? You should know better. Ugh, you have work to get caught up on if you're going to pass this year. You're lucky our teacher is so forgiving. Alia groaned. Good thing you and Adrian take good notes. Marinette smiled. What about me? Nino said. All right, all right. You draw pretty cool doodles. <laughs> Marinette laughed. You're right. I do tend to doodle more than take notes. Nino laughed, making the rest of the group start laughing as well. No more missing class, though, really. All right? Alia said. We won't, we promise. We have my cousin to help anyways. Adrian smiled. Cousin? You mean Felix? Nino asked. Yeah, he's the reason Adrian got to stay in the first place. Marinette smiled. Dude, no way. Really? Nino said surprised. Yeah, really. Seems like he's changed. Adrian smiled. Well, what is the deal with you two? I know Marinette didn't bribe you into dating her or anything, but like, how did you two start dating? Or is that a rumor that you two are dating at all? Alia smirked. No, we're dating. We, uh, kind of started dating right after the fashion show. Adrian smiled nervously, thinking back to the times they kissed during the thunderstorms and the Eiffel Tower kiss. Oh? She said, raising an eyebrow. Y yeah no need to go into details. She said, blushing. Oh no, I need the details. Go on. She said. Adrian turned to Marinette and saw her face turning bright red and laughed, knowing that she was now unable to answer anything Ollie wanted to know. It was all up to him now. Well, I invited her to dinner after the show since we won, and I asked her to be my girlfriend. The past few days, we kind of got really close, as you could tell by the Ferris wheel date. He coughed, trying to close that conversation off before they brought up any questions. Well, anyways, I wanted to talk to my father about it, and we decided to keep it a secret, though Chloe would make things difficult. So we decided to tell her, then she and Lila spread rumors about Marinette. Adrian sighed. 
Yeah, that's what happens when you talk to Chloe about things like that. You should have come to me and Nino. I can be your girl's perspective, and Nino is your guy perspective. <laughs> Alia laughed. Well, Chloe knows my dad. He said, rubbing the back of his neck. Oh. Well, can't help you with that one. <laughs> Alia laughed. Oh well, things blew over while you were gone, girl. Everything should be fine when you come back. Alia smiled, hugging Marinette. I'm glad. Marinette smiled. But Nino and I better head out. We have to watch my little sisters in a few, and I want to get some dinner before we do. Right, Nino? She winked. Oh, uh, right, babe. He said, sitting up off of his bed, helping Alia up. Don't be a stranger. Alia said, waving goodbye. Marinette turned back to Adrian, and instead of seeing a smile, she saw a frown, which caused her to give him a confused look. What's the matter? She asked. It's just my father. He sighed, falling back onto his pillow, letting his arm fall into his eyes. I know that I should be happy about staying with you, with Plague, with my friends, but I still don't feel right about my father being in jail, especially if I'm not 100% certain he's Hawkmoth. We don't have his miraculous marinette. We need to find it. He said, sighing. We will. I promise. It's only a matter of time before Myora strikes and messes up. We will take hold of both, and then there will be no reason for them to hold your father in jail anymore, she said, lifting his arm off of his eyes. How are you always so positive? He said, smiling while laughing. <laughs> really? I literally ran away and ditched you. Well, never mind. You're right. How are you always so supportive? He said, laughing with her. Because I always have my partner with me. She smiled. He looked at her and they went silent. He stood up and walked over to the piano, letting her follow him. He sat down at the piano, and in the moonlight, he placed his hands on the black and white keys that his father used to force him to play every single day. The keys seemed like a chore. I used to hate practicing because I had no one to play with. I used to uh, place my phone on top of the piano and leave his cat noir. Though now, I'm grateful that he made me learn such beautiful talents in life. Now I can shower you in music, princess. He smiled, glancing over at Marinette, seeing her blush. Pianos are very romantic, you know? She said, sitting down beside him, watching him play. Really? You find pianos romantic? What about the players? He smiled devilishly. Did you just miss a key? She said. Did I? He asked, looking down. She started laughing as she teased him and pressed on a note at the very top to mess him up, and he smirked at her. You dare mess up a concert in your honor, princess. He laughed. She ran away screaming, transforming, and dashing out of his window before he had the chance to grab her. His eyes lit up as he saw her twirling in the moonlight, in her red and black suit. She zipped her way back to him, stopping outside his window. Milady, being irresponsible with our powers, aren't we? He smirked. I could have sworn I saw an Akuma. I guess it was a moth. She giggled. Wanna help me make sure? He smiled and climbed onto the window railing, closing his eyes as he felt the summer night air blow through his hair. Plague, claws out. Alright, that is the last chapter for Downpour, but don't be sad. There is going to be another season called Drenched. Not sure when it will be coming out, so stay tuned. Don't forget to give lots of love to my friends who are helping voice act and also I'm going to give another shout out to Sisat or Sisiat on Tumblr for allowing me to use their artwork and I'll see you in the next series. Bye guys!